Life isn't perfect, and neither are we. Nope. But we know how to face our fears. And have some fun. And talk about all the messiest things of life. Like the messiest things. <laughs> get connected to yourself, get connected to others, and get connected to the life right in front of you. This is The Connected Life with Justin and Abby. That's me. That's you. And you. The month of September is almost upon us. Ooh. What does that mean? So many things. What First of all, what does it mean, God? What you're does it mean? Turning Do you remember 40. That? <laughs> the double rainbow. The double rainbow. Yeah. That was the you're turning thing ever. 40 in September. I uh, y- yep. There's there's truth to that. In fact, if you're listening, his birthday is September 29th. And God. one of the things no. that Justin likes the most is hearing how he's impacted people. If you want to <laughs> write in and yeah, tell him up. if he's affected your life in any way. Yeah, you can get on our website at justinabby.com if you want to do that. And yeah, and just send write me a your little, birthday message on there in the, in the um, like on the Connect Life uh, podcast mm-hmm. page and mm-hmm. send in. I got an idea for you, and yet it's not an idea. Just no, send us a it's thought. Just a birthday, happy birthday idea, a happy birthday thought. Yeah, and uh, but I mean that yeah, would make that's, you happy, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, as it almost as happy as gift certificates from BigBadToyStore.com. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny com. you were ready for plenty that plenty of action figures to order over there mm. um, <clears throat> but you know what else is happening in September oh uh, you mm. know what I do know what it's September 1st is the application deadline for our life consulting master class that lasts one year you know we all know that I give people a couple extra days though yeah you do because every the people that are like you yeah. Last minute people. You're yeah, like, I want to give them a little bit of yeah, grace. So it's probably like September 2nd or 3rd, realistically. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. But you've been hearing about it. You know that if you want to go on a year long journey with us mm. for personal transformation or to become a life consultant, you can jump in and do that. Yeah, it's so fun. I love all the people. We become friends and family with them and we get to see their lives transform. And you look good. Oh, thank you. That was just a like rabbit mm-hmm. trail. That's Quick called turn. ADHD. I uh-huh. was just staring at you thinking you're It's because I got my good. pump on at the gym. You know, going into my 40s, let's talk real quick um, uh-huh. about that. And um, uh, going into my 40s, I plan on being in better shape in my 40s than I was in my early 20s. I hope so. God, you were you looked like such crap. Yeah, I've gone downhill, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I got stuck in the middle of that because I was like, people are going to think I'm being serious and I'm not. Yeah, and, and then it was just like flat. Yeah, and they're I like, did. oh, she's mean. She is this mean. No, I'm not. Yes, she is. No. Don't let her buffalo you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even real. Um, um, the other thing happening in September, though, ADHD S- opening. September uh, 14th. 14th. The Pathway to Freedom. One of the most important courses you could ever take in your life. I love that's it. That's 10 weeks. So that's like instead of spending a year with us, you want 10 weeks. Yep. Figure out how your Ooh, emotions are affecting your life. Yeah. You figure out what's and going on in your emotions and what to do about it. But also me and Pizzi are leading immersion calls. You and Johnny are leading an immersion me call. Me and J-Dog. Um, Jay Dizzles. Yeah, we're doing all kinds of configurations of the four of us, and I am stoked. Oh, we, me and good, PC good, good, good. this year are going to try to, and we have a couple of guests that we'll have on there too, but we are going to give so much extra content this year. Oh, yeah. On the Saturday calls. Extra content. It's going to be like taking two courses at the same time. We're going to talk about creating safety in relationships at the same time as Pathway to Freedom. It's going to be a melding of so much information. If you're dating or getting married or married or have friends or have family or just want good relationships. Get ready for better sex. Not, yeah. Not with your family, with like yeah. your spouse. So, <laughs> but that's one of the byproducts. It's very it. true. Yeah. Yeah. And, and with that said, so my 40s um, are going to be, um, that's that's my trajectory. What is your trajectory? To do uh, LCMC and Pathway to Freedom? No, getting super shredded oh. and like. We're jumping back to that. Getting my brain game on and in Ooh, getting clarity. Sexy. I was in the ocean the other day and I was getting clarity as I was diving into waves about like what I wanted to start implementing into this next year. It oh. felt so refreshing. Oh. The ocean is my place to hear God. Oh, we like, should live near the ocean then. Ah, oh, you're not going to get me to move to San Diego. <laughs> She's been trying to twist my arm behind my back. She's like, wouldn't you like, wouldn't you like to be here in this, in this nice, wonderful weather all yeah, day long? Yeah, great weather, an ocean, mm, mm-hmm. food we can eat, mm-hmm. mm. copious amounts of people that I can't get away from. That's not true. 
It's very over it overpopulated. Never, no. Compared to my likings. Oh, of, okay. My hermit likings where oh, I just okay. want to like. Be in our basement. <laughs> breathe. Mm. Yeah. Anyways, um, speaking of being in my basement. Yeah. Here we go with the podcast for today. This is called something about, we don't know what the title is, but the concept is creating or uh, being aware of healthy coping mechanisms. Because healthy- coping mechanisms can cause you pain and they can ruin your life or they can be very beneficial to your life and the season that you're in. You have to know how to have balance in them. But having healthy coping mechanisms is such an important part of living well. So what, one of the one of the words that uh, Abby was using for um, coping mechanisms before we got onto the podcast was dissociation. Ooh. And being able to dissociate, disconnect out of something and be able to breathe. <laughs> Take a minute to breathe. And it's interesting because... I think that uh, a lifestyle of dissociation is deeply destructive. Well, what it does is it keeps you in pain. When we dissociate, we're trying to avoid pain at all costs. So we avoid looking at the things that are hard. We avoid having conflict. We avoid facing our emotions. But what that does is it keeps a low level of that pain happening all the time and pushing us towards decisions that keep us in the pain cycle. Right. And so what we're t- what we're talking about is this kind of balance where we go, oh, actually, dissociation is meant to be a gift for intense situations. For yes. instance, uh, I've had guys who have come to me in my office who were uh, snipers in the war, yeah. active duty, and saw um, a lot of difficult situations <laughs> in, in those roles. And they couldn't live in those moments uh associating with the reality of what was going on. Yeah, it's too intense. There's a level of them that had to actually dissociate and go, okay, for this moment of time, I'm going to have to uh, disconnect from the reality of what I'm actually in, the trauma that's happening all around me in order to get through this moment. Now, those guys, when they come out of that, one of the difficulties that they have is that they've programmed a lifestyle. Yes. And we work on getting them out of the lifestyle and slow trickling into being able to feel again and process pieces or portions of the pain as they're able to do that. Um, but yeah, the more present you are, the more healing you can bring to the people around you, the more you can get healing. If I am dissociated, I can't get healing to the parts of my heart that need it, the the pain parts. And so being, I mean, we've done so many co- podcasts about being connected and yeah. being present and learning how to not dissociate. Today we're going to talk about feelings. the disconnected life. <laughs> we're inviting you to another side of the coin called the disconnected life that's what we might call this today this yeah, podcast the, the disconnected, disconnected life. life yeah but in a good, smiley face because it's we are talking about a positive thing i remember when we first got married and we would get into fights and we'd be on our way to a friend's house and we get into a fight and we would never make it into the friend's house right we would be trapped in the driveway for hours. Yes. Talking going back about and forth. The thing. Yeah. And I remember, um, and now we're married like 14 years, and I can look at newlyweds yeah. who get stuck in that cycle, and I'm like, oh, that's so cute. You still don't know how to dissociate yet. <laughs> Out um, of that moment for a little bit. Yeah. And, and now, so like what we're talking about, the healthy balance. Now, if me and you are on the way to a party, yeah. 90% of the time, if we're fighting in the car, and we get to the party, we can actually put that aside. It's called a timeout. <laughs> a timeout, yeah. We can take a timeout from the conversation, knowing we'll come back to it and we will work through it. Now, the unhealthy thing is when you just jump out of the car, act like everything's fine and never come back to it. That's right. just pretending. That's, that's where that's stuff fake. gets buried. That's yep. a lifestyle of dissociation. We're and when just it gets buried, this. it will explode. At some point, yeah. It, it, there's no. It's like a jack in the box. Is that the thing that you wind up? You gonna keep going with that? Pop goes the weasel. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Most of the generation that might be listening right now is like, "What's a jack in the box?" Oh, that's actually true. That's true. Is that something on an iPad? Oh yeah, that's fair. It was, was an old, it was an old school toy that you wound up, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden it popped out. A of creepy box. little clown pops out. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> that stuff does explode. But again, we're we're talking about these moments in life today, where it's actually necessary to take a break. So mm-hmm. I had a friend. I want to talk about this for a second. Share a story. I had a friend 
who went through what felt like a very devastating divorce, which all yeah. divorces are very painful. Yeah. He was very, very uh, depressed in portions of that, rightfully so. Yeah. Uh, as a dad, just trying to navigate what felt like something that caught him off guard. For yeah. him, this is something he didn't see coming. Absolutely. And for a couple of years, he was just trying to pick himself back up off the floor. Was it Nick? Was it Joey? Was it Frank? <laughs> yeah. Was it Gertrude? Who was it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. And, I was just trying to name people that I don't know. Uh -huh. So he, you know, one of the conversations that we had, because I entered in somewhere mid process, yeah. is that it happened into his life. And one of the dialogues I had with him as he was processing pieces of the depression and stuff and trying to figure out how to manage his family and stuff like that. I was like, so how, how are you, what are you doing to get by? He's like, well, one of the things that I do is number one, I give myself the space to cry. Yeah. So there's a grief process that's in it. Yep. He's like, then I give myself plenty of days where I'm like, I don't have to think about this at all today. Yes. I'm giving myself a timeout card yep. from that part of my life. Yep. Today, I'm going to go watch a movie. Yep. Today, I'm going to go have fun with my kids. Uh -huh. Today, I'm going to go hang out with some friends and maybe go play basketball, go fishing. And I'm just going to live. Yes. I'm going to go over here and re-engage my life. And then I'm going to cry. Tomorrow I'm going to cry. And then I'll cycle back later yes. on and I'll cry as it's necessary. But one general. of the things that he's talking about here is learning how to navigate our soul, mm -hmm. like having an ability to manage our own soul. A lot of people, when life is happening, are very victimized to the life around them, mm -hmm. victimized to their own emotions. Yeah. And these emotions are coming up and they're happening to me. And now yep. I'm just depressed and I'm stuck inside of it. Yes. Rather than going like, Hey, I'm going to get in the driver's seat mm -hmm. and today I'm going to knowingly ch choose to turn off this emotion yeah. or I'm going to knowingly cho choose to turn it on. Yeah. But building the muscle to build the switch internally inside mm -hmm. of us is like critical to thriving in life. Well, and me and BZ talk about this in the pathway to freedom. I highly recommend you take it uh, where we talk about what's going on in our brain, because when you actually step away from situations that have you triggered you can actually regulate your body in a way that then will help you think differently about the circumstance you're facing. And so sometimes we get so lost in the emotion of the thing that we're looking at and we actually need to be able to take space from it and get back to our true self because that's where we, when we're connected to ourselves and regulated and grounded is often when we get the solutions we need, when the ideas of the pathway through come to us. Yeah. And you can't get to that spot when you're so lost in the thing that is happening. Yeah. One of the things that I know, you know, when we look at our marriage, there is a lot of detriment done when we couldn't hit pause. Oh, man, oh man, I wish I could go back and and, th and there were retrain there were, this part. For both of us, we we both had our own um shortcomings in that. There was there was a level of avoidance inside of me, there was a level of anxious attachment inside of you. Mm -hmm. And it was a perfect storm because the more that there was places where I just needed to breathe because I was in trauma brain mm -hmm. and trying to get myself together and very scared and there was fear that escalated inside of Abby as I was pulling away without a promise of reconnection, right? Mm -hmm. So so both of us are kind of doing this really bad dance around this situation that escalated in this back and forth war of explosion mm -hmm. back and forth, trying to get something from each other. I'm yeah. trying to get distance. She's trying to get all the information out of me. Mm -hmm. And neither one of them were right. It was mm -hmm. just this mess. Instead of like having this agreement of like, you know, we have this space, we can go breathe mm -hmm. and we can come reconnect and talk about this a day from now or hours from now yeah. or a week from now, it, depending on how big it is and what our needs are and check in along the way. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of what uh, drove that inability to do that was fear. Yeah. And so oftentimes we are driven by fear to live a lifestyle of dissociation <laughs> Or we're driven by a lifestyle of fear to not have a healthy balance of like, oh, I can actually step away from this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think like so the fear if you have. So the dissociation is a great example on this one because you wanted to dissociate from the fight. Right. My brain was overwhelmed. Yeah. I want to get out. I want to get out. I want to get out. And the unhealthy part of that is there wasn't that like, hey, I need a minute, but I will come back to this. Right. I do want to talk through this. So you, there has to be that balance of I'm not going to dissociate for forever. 
And then for me, the bal- the fear of like you're dissociating. So this is never we're never going to be able to do this. We'll never get to connection. So for me, learn I had to learn to dissociate more and you had to learn to have right. value for not dissociating. Right. And it's that balance. Uh, the key word for healthy coping mechanisms is balance. Right. It's the balance of both. Because honestly, there's so many times we hung in fights we shouldn't have hung in. Oh, com- oh a thousand percent. Yeah. A thousand percent. I remember disagreements that lasted until three, four in the morning. Oh, yeah. And, and we and we thought we had to. T- I mean, I grew up with the don't let the anger go down on your don't let the sun go, go down, down on, on your, your anger. anger. And so it was like there wasn't an ability to just walk away. And honestly, walking away, sleeping, regulating. Well, even. Yeah, because what would happen is the more the less rest we had, the more <laughs> crazy we became. <laughs> the less we were capable of responding really well, because the reality is and is, you lose logic. Logic goes out the window. Yeah. Logic when goes you're com- tired, when you're and it's been on brain. for a long time and you're in trigger brain. When you're hungry. Mm-hmm. I do remember how many deeply explosive fights we'd have because we were in the middle of hanger. Yeah. And we need to just stop. It's like our blood sugar is low. Yeah. Like let us go eat and come back. Yeah. But for both of us, both of us had a sense of an ab- abandonment. Mm-hmm. They, they manifested in, a, in their own particular ways. Mm-hmm. But we both got really scared and felt abandoned. Yeah. That was that was very normal. And that's another fear point for a lot of people that can't like maybe put something on a shelf healthily is we're scared of the abandonment yeah. process. And I think like the more trust you have. So like, you know, in the past, we talked down here about how me and Pizzi had conflict and how she just stopped talking to me for months once. And so it took a long time to build the trust that if we're having a conflict and we need to step away so that we can like get reconnected to ourselves and regulated that we know we both will come back the more that that happens the more often you both step away and come back step away and come back step away and pursue that reconnection if you're pursuing the reconnection regularly with people they will trust that when you leave it's safe yeah but that happens over time because they have to know you're stepping away but i know because i've experienced over and over again that you come back so let's talk about that and reasons why people are really scared of healthy dissociation yeah um so for instance in my childhood when a fight ensued my mom would storm off Uh huh. this is one aspect mom yeah. would storm off in the middle of something and she would just be like i'm leaving yeah and so there was a sense of there's the imminent divorce coming totally and there's imminent demise for all of us. So yeah. our whole world's going to fall apart in two seconds. Yeah. So there was a lot of there was a lot of fear in the idea of I mean, like if if you got in a vehicle and drove off on me in the middle of a fight, I felt deeply abandoned. Yeah, like and, I was and, and, divorcing and, you. Yeah, like and, I was and, never and, coming back. And it provoked a lot of for me suicidal ideation. Mm-hmm. I was in an emotional flashback often in my childhood, like. There goes mom out the door. It's over. The divorce is here at, at the doorstep. So there's a lot of people that you've watched the dynamics of parents, you know, do behavior like that. And you're like, oh, I just have to get connection or fight through this. Yeah. And, and, and I watched my dad as a side note. My mom actively did that. My dad would just all week long work 80 hour weeks. Yep, totally. <laughs> he just wouldn't come home. Yeah. So it wouldn't be in the middle of a fight. It was a lifestyle of like, I'm not in this house. Yes inside of this and and so people are like oh no all love is being turned off mm-hmm. when we're dissociating so you might watch i'll use a husband as an example mostly husbands are the ones that play video games there are women out there that are listening and they play video games too but a lot of times guys will be like i need to go play a video game mm-hmm. and the wife is having a meltdown on the other end like you're just leaving me because there's probably aspects of her world where dad was dissociated into work lost right. in a hobby to deal with stuff like that. And what isn't observed in childhood oftentimes is the healthy repair. Yeah. So it's the, I went two separate directions Yep. and I knew that there was a standard inside of my parents' marriage where they would come back and they were like, oh no, we're going to work this out. And then I would watch, like there wasn't for a lot of people that moment where they could watch Parents yeah. repair yep. a situation where there's healthy grief, apologies, where they saw that no matter what they, it, they walked away, they came back all the time. Correct. 
So a lot of times they would come back together. There wouldn't be resolve and you're waiting for the moment when finally it would end. Right. Yeah, totally. And so something that we're in order to live a healthy lifestyle of like coping mechanisms that we implement at times, we have to rebrand the way that we approach conflicts. Yeah. So that like she's talking about, whether it's in, um, uh, say, a committed marriage or it's in Friendship friendships or family, family where you go like, hey, I want to establish a, a lifestyle mm-hmm. of healthy repair yeah. that we're always going to work towards repair at some point inside of this. And we're going to kind of give each other a, a roadmap to that repair. Yeah. And that roadmap is like, hey, I need a few days and I'll check in in a few days yes. if that's what you need. Or I need a few hours or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I think about most of conflict, the escalations, when you say the thing that you regret saying, it's because you were triggered. And oftentimes before that moment, you could have walked away. Yes. Before that moment, you could say, you know, what? I'm not I my guards are up. I'm I'm not I'm more defensive than I am seeking to understand or I can tell that there's a lot going on inside of me and I want to be able to have this conversation in a healthy way. So I need to be able to, I need to take a little bit of time. Can we talk about this tomorrow? But I will come back. And then when you come back, it builds trust with them that that is true, that you will do that. But then you don't have to get to the point where you are so lost in the emotion that you say something that creates more pain and chaos. Totally. People think that walking away causes pain. And it does for the first few times you do it with anybody. For the right. first few times, it reminds them of all the abandonment they've ever had. Right. But then they see you come back and it starts to feel safer. But um, it causes less pain than the damage you do often if you are triggered. Stayed inside. And there are some people on another note mm-hmm. that they're scared not about what their partner will do. They're scared in them inside of themselves about what they won't do. Mm-hmm. So it's the idea of like, my parents always walked out of situations. I have made a vow that I won't be the one yes. that walks away from this. So I'm going to stand in this moment, come hell or high water, no matter how heated this gets, because I'm not going to be my dad who walked out on us. Yeah. And what we do, we didn't do a service to like our reaction to our historic pain to stay in something in that way doesn't do a service to anyone inside of it. It's only disservice. So what it has to be is like, oh, it wasn't wrong that my dad walked out. It's that he walked out on the terms of F you. I'm not coming back into this situation. I don't want repair. I'm going to healthily choose to remove myself early on with a promise that I want to come back and and build this thing back together and repair it. Yeah, I think that's really good. And uh, one of the things I want to say about dissociation is it's, it's the idea of learning how to step aside from the emotions that you can get swept up in. And so like we're talking about it in a fight, but I think about one of the things that I've used association for the most is with depression. So with my body, um, when it, when I'm sick, I can wake up and my body can feel horrible. Some, some mornings I wake up and my body feels awful and I can instantly go into depression, hopelessness, all that stuff. And so I have to have things in the morning that I have to get up and do. And it's for the sake of getting my mind. Like if I just give myself time, I'll just ruminate over my depression thoughts. I will just. And so some healthy dissociation is also learning how to switch the channel in your mind Mm -hmm. So when I'm ruminating over like, oh, my gosh, I can't do anything. I'm never going to feel good. I'm not I I can't live like everybody else. I can't eat like everybody else. I'm is there any reason for me to even be here because I can't even live a life. I'm just fighting for survival. Wow, that sounds really hopeless. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Your brain can start to go down that path and it can be a dark path. And so I've learned There are things that I have to do to dissociate from that. And that doesn't like healthy grief. I want to feel. And we talk about this in our living for the life course about clean pain and dirty pain. And I want to feel healthy grief about things. But I there's sometimes where I'm just getting lost in the swirl. And so that's why I know my tendencies. This is where self-awareness helps. I know I struggle with depression in the mornings. It's the hardest time for me. And so there's things that I do to one thing that I do to dissociate. I don't do it all the time, but I make the bed at least 50 percent of the time. Yeah, because I'm saying I'm getting out of bed. 
and I'm not going to get back in it and I'm not going to live in a depressed state. Even if I go lay on the couch with a blanket, it's not going to be laying in bed all day. Yeah. Because it's helping me dissociate from that feeling of being lost in bed. Or like this is one of the reasons I um spend a lot of time at the adventure challenge is because when I when I have a meeting that I have to go there, I can dissociate from the feelings that are going on in my body. I have something that helps me push through that motivates me to get out of the door, that motivates me to get out of my house. And so there's something to be said for that thing of like, it helps me switch the channel. And my brain doesn't always want to switch the channel. Like I can just drown in hopelessness. I can drown in depression. I can drown in feeling sick. It's very real. And so I have to do things on a regular basis. I'm like, what do I need to do to get out of this feeling? Yeah. One of the things that we have done with The Connected Life is we have been making invitations for people to get connected to their emotions, right? So we're we're talking to a people group in general. The broad generalization is a lot of people don't feel anything. They've they've created mounds of dissociation um, that they're hiding behind. And so we've tried to attempt to give tools and concepts to help them kind of break down the barriers that keep them so trapped within. Now, there's the other side of the coin where people go to extremisms where they live with emotions just driving their entire life. And that's where a lot of people are really scared of like, well, if I actually start feeling, it'll consume me. Actually, it doesn't have to consume you. You can put boundaries on it. What Abby's talking about is the idea of creating boundaries around like, Mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to give myself space over here to feel, Mm -hmm. get connected to my sadness, get connected to like, oh, I'm actually depressed. I need to talk about that Mm -hmm. with somebody and not just bury my head and work over here. But at the same time, Abby's like, no, I'm very well aware of my emotions. I don't have a problem um, feeling them, knowing that they're there. I actually have to wire in something into me to deliberately go into a space of work that I'm deliberately pushing that all aside for that time of being. Otherwise, I'll get consumed. Yeah. And the thing again is if I don't spend time to actually feel Mm -hmm. after that, it will become unhealthy. Like it'll become an unhealthy dissociation, an unhealthy coping mechanism. Right. And like anytime we avoid forever, it it creates chaos for us. But if we get consumed, it also creates chaos for us. Right. It's the whole idea of, and I've talked about this a million times. If emotions are like kids, you can't throw them in the trunk, but you can't let them drive your car either. Totally. And one of the things that that's necessary to build into our lives on either side of the coin um, is just really good relationships, community Mm -hmm. of people that know you that also like where you understand inside of your community's culture, the idea of balance. Yeah. And so where friends are like, dude, you've been spending a lot of time just overly ruminating in this space. Mm -hmm. I think it's time to go have some fun here and play and maybe find an extra hobby Mm -hmm. because you're totally consumed with this issue on this side. And then the other side of the coin where friends are like, you're so disconnected. Look, and I did this with a friend recently who was moving. And I said, hey, I love you so much. Um, I think, though, that the buildup to your move and, and leaving this space, you're not actually connected into yourself. Yeah. And you're way too happy about this. And it's OK. You can do most of your grieving when you get to the other side. But I need to let you know that that like. You need to be aware at moments in time right here. Some of this should be sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're like, oh, uh, OK, I guess I need to think about that. Yeah. And they're in the process right now of hitting the waves of the, the level of grief that's attached to it. But that's like he was benefited by a community around him that could poke in every once in a while and be like, hey, I'm going to challenge that. Yeah. I mean, I this happens a lot with one of my best friends. I'll start getting really frustrated with them. And that's my knowing of like, oh, they're dissociating a lot. Mm-hmm. Because their dissociated version of them, themselves is a little bit more narcissistic, and mm. um, and uh, it's very hard to feel connected to. Yeah. So when I'm feeling that, I'll just be like, "Hey, how are you doing? Are, how's are you feeling dissociated?" And they will often be like, "Yes, I am. I am actually. This is the pain going on underneath." And typically, when they connect to themselves enough to know what's going on under that and share about it, it helps them come back into being connected. 
And it, it is a great thing to have somebody who can, from the outside can say it feels like there's dissociation happening. Um, but on the flip side, that same friend, because they're good at dissociating, is somebody that I can be around when I'm sick. And I can actually, it's very easy for me to be able to jump out of thinking about being right. sick. I have my friend Craig Pickerel, which you guys, if you've listened at all for any amount of time, he's been on here before with me. And I, I'll i get on the phone with him and talk about a problem and he'll laugh at me about it. <laughs> like he's super compassionate and empathetic. Like he can get there if necessary, but he knows. He's like, oh, look at you, big baby. Oh, what's happening in this area? You can't take life, huh? And we start laughing together yeah. and he starts drawing me he mm -hmm. knows when it's time to draw me into a healthy level of dissociation i know that there's camaraderie because mm -hmm. he's going to go join me he's joined me in tears so yep. he's going to pull me out into that and, mm -hmm. and he's going to make more jokes about the situation until i can barely breathe i'm laughing so hard yeah i'm like that's what i needed i called craig because i needed a good level of dissociation yeah, where i know that this person knows me yep. they care about this the issue and they'll definitely tackle it if I really want to tackle it. Yeah. But they're going to help me go breathe for a moment. Yeah. And I think that there are, I think it's helpful to say there's healthy ways to dissociate and unhealthy ways to dissociate. Which is something that would be great for us to get into. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of things that are addictions can be chaos when you dissociate into them. So alcohol is a way that people dissociate. I, I, I want to add this. I want to say destructive. Dating. Yeah. Instead of even unhealthy, there's going to be constructive versus destructive where yeah. you're like, oh, my soul came out of that um, dissociation even more destroyed from it. Yeah. It's like, I know people who have broken up, ha, been in breakups yeah. and they're like, you, they go off and they're just like, I just need to go screw a couple people. Yeah. And they come out of that and they're like, that was so horrible and painful. And, and I'm like, yeah, you, you escalated your pain. Yeah. You that, magnified it. Right. Mm -hmm. You, you could have done a boys weekend, played some poker in Vegas, not necessarily had to find yourself an STD along the way, <laughs> um, had a few drinks, laughed, sure. you know, watched a football game together and could have been like, yeah, we had some fun. We played, we got away and I came back to the reality of life. Right. And I have, I'm a few dollars like lighter in my pocket, whatever. Yeah. Um, but it didn't have to destroy something about your life. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, you know, like, uh, it so like it'd be a great example is like some people dissociate into sleeping well i think sleeping a little extra feels great for it's a little for bit the body a little rest but if you do it every day and you you start not waking up and sleeping in all the time it will then become destructive anything right. that you let it's like dissociation is kind of like weeds they're fine in proportion but if they <laughs> get out of if they overgrow right i know people that it's super healthy to go to the gym and dissociate and yes, work out. Yes, I agree. Working out is a great way to dissociate because it gets your serotonin and your mm -hmm. your um, chemical levels up. It helps release endorphins for you, which is very regulating. It's a great way to get outside of whatever you're thinking. It also helps get emotions out of your body. Right. But, and, but doing it overly, you can actually even destroy your body. Mm -hmm. I, um, I knew someone back in the day, they used to run... Somewhere between 15 and 20 miles a day. Uh huh. I knew somebody also back in the day mm -hmm. who used to run like 20 to 26 miles a day. Right. And Broke their knees. Yeah. Blew their knees out and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and that, that they dissociated so extensively into it that they actually damaged themselves. But it yeah. wasn't wrong. Like, hey, I need to go on a, a run every day for a few miles, breathe, get my head clear, mm -hmm. you know, get myself sweating. And so, again, that's what we're talking about. Healthy dissociation is like finding ways to dissociate and balance. Go to a movie. Yeah. Play a video game. Get get connected to a hobby that you really love. Yeah. Go help people. <laughs> I, yeah. I think helping people is a great way to dissociate. Yeah. It's, make, a, it's a beautiful. I mean, I like the I like the dissociation that like gives back to the world. But there is something to be said. You aren't thinking about yourself when you're thinking about helping someone else. And here's another here's another thing that's really beautiful. It's not about minimizing the pain that we're in, mm -hmm. but you can get involved in helping people in healthy ways where you see that yes. like actually their life has some really big pain points. Mm -hmm. And it's not here. I'm not minimizing my pain in this, but wow. Yeah. They're really going through the ringer over there. Yeah. I'm not starving or I'm not out of work or whatever. And it helps bring a balance to the perspective of our pain. Like my pain is real. 
And it doesn't have to be all consuming. I have some beautiful things about my life that are successful or good or going okay. And I can sell it. I, I have stuff to celebrate while I have stuff to grieve. Yeah. And I can find that in watching other people's terrible lives as I try and help them. <laughs> now, one thing I will say that I think is really beneficial in dissociation is to um, to learn how to regulate, which I think is a really important thing. So one thing that I've learned is breathwork stuff. We've both done breathwork stuff when you're in high emotions it's a good time or when you're just maybe kind, maybe you're not in high emotions. You're just there's like a heaviness that's kind of weighing on you or you're just feeling a low level of anxiety or whatever. Breath work. We do Wim Hof. We just found a YouTube video that you can follow. Yeah. And it's started that a while ago. And breath work and exercise ice baths is like a big thing that helps you. It's a healthy dissociation. What it is, is it's getting you out of your ruminating emotions back into your body, yeah, into being present, into being aware of what's going on. That's why when you have anxiety attacks, one of the things that um, counselors will tell you to do is to ground, which is like, what do you see, hear, smell, taste, touch? Yeah. What are what are your five senses and describing them in detail and, and getting back. And so getting your brain in back to your body and what you're actually experiencing in the present is a really great way to dissociate in a healthy way from overwhelming feelings. Another thing that like my counselor does with me all the time is going back into memories that have happened and reliving the good parts of them. Like, so going to a memory where I felt really loved and yeah. remembering what that felt like in my body and what it smelled like in the room and what what it, like remembering all the visceral details about it. What it does is it helps you dissociate out of, we're saying separate yourself from the overwhelming negative emotions. Yeah. Choose to, so you can either go to a memory from the past or you can visualize emotions. So like one thing that I visualize often would be like one day when I can eat again, what that would feel like and the feel, or like one day feeling like I overcame something. Like I often will be like one day I'm going to look back and be like, I can't, I remember doing this, you know, our first year of marriage, I had horrible bladder infections all year. Mm -hmm. And I remember visualizing what it would look like to pee with no pain mm. and how great that would feel. But the visualization is the point of visualizing is imagining feeling it as if it's actually happening. And and what the concept is and the law of attraction really works on this is learning how to feel the emotions you want to feel before your circumstances make them happen. So the idea is like thinking about a past memory where you felt really loved or really safe or really taken care of or thinking about the future and imagining feeling really safe or really taken care of. It's the concept of experiencing positive emotions. Yeah. You know, I knew someone that would when they were in a lot of pain, one of the ways that they would dissociate, they would have a few childhood meals that their grandma or, mm. or mom would cook. And they would go make those meals yeah. because what it would do is it would remind them like the smell mm -hmm. would bring them back to moments where mm -hmm. they would be sitting around as family and they'd be enjoying those moments. And and they they weren't people that um, you gotta do it in moderation eating a bunch just, of stuff. Yep, mm -hmm. But what they did was they're like, oh, it felt good to make the meal. It was the pr even the process because yeah. they they had been part of the process of cooking um, with the family. And so they're like, Oh, I feel like a kid again. I'm making the food. I can smell it. I'm there. And so they're actually reconnecting to those good body emotions as they're there. And it wasn't so much about eating the food. It wasn't just the taste of it. It was the entire experience of participating in it. And then they'd share their meal with friends and stuff like that. But that would bring, be something that would bring them joy and bring them back to balance and chill them out. Yeah. I think that's a great example. Um, I was thinking that one of the things politics. that I do yeah. dissociate into politics, <laughs> ranting and raving about terrible politics. That's what you're going to say, right? <laughs> no, nope. I'm just I'm joking. Nope, so nope, many nope. people get lost in bantering about things like that. High energy things that provoke it more. They dissociate into things that actually cause more angst yeah. and frustration. Mm -hmm. And I was just going to make a point of like, actually, there's things that we can dissociate into like that that actually raise 
our hard. anxiety yes. uh-huh. and disconnect us in an unhealthy way, even more just simple things. That's not an evil thing or destructive mm-hmm. thing. It's just not beneficial to our soul. Yeah. I think uh, one of the things I've seen is for me, when I, so either if I get out in the water, like nature helps me dissociate Great. in a healthy way. Right. Because you're taking in things, you're feeling and experiencing things. Part of healthy dissociation is experiencing things in the present. Right. So instead of ruminating on what's happening in at work or what's going to happen with your future or what you did in the past that is ruining your life, like instead of thinking about all those things, being able to be present is one of the best ways to live in in healthy dissociation which is like, so when I'm on the lake and I'm thinking about how the lake sounds and I'm thinking about how the lake feels and I'm thinking about what the sun feels like on my skin and and I'm just being thankful for the moment, like that is a great way to dissociate. Or for me, uh, convertibles, like riding in a convertible. I like taking a drive. Yeah. Yeah. Is one of the way, I mean, you actually do that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But like for me, convertibles, feeling the wind in my face and feeling like uh, the sun on my skin or the the evening sky above me and feeling more connected because there's not a root. Like something about convertibles helps. Like it's that thing that makes me feel alive. Somebody's going to be like, so honey, Abby Stumball told me uh, that I needed to Dissociate go buy a convertible. a convertible. I hope they do. <laughs> buy like, me what? one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I agree. Go buy that convertible and... Get a double for me. Send it over here. Yeah. Yeah. But my point is there's lots of things I know. So if I'm struggling emotionally, I have lists of things that I can do that I know will pull me back into life, back into presence, back into enjoying something. Like a lot of times we need to experience pleasure in the midst of everyday life. And so finding those healthy ways You know, like there's a lot of unhealthy ways to experience pleasure and a lot of those unhealthy ways pulls us back into the pain cycle. But if I go for a ride in a convertible, it's not pulling me back into the pain Mm. cycle. It's just getting me giving me a break. I think about friends, they'll go to um, like live theater Mm -hmm. or a live concert or may- maybe just like in a small venue mm-hmm. where somebody's playing jazz or mm-hmm. they're they're like experiencing the life that's right there like mm-hmm. they're present with life outside of their pain outside of their problems but present with something that's very real like a lot of people you know we went back to like the idea of like i'll just get so drunk i'm out of my mind and mm-hmm. that didn't but you can get present with goodness that mm-hmm. surrounds creativity i think about people mm-hmm. who go to art galleries there was um Oh, what's the name of the big museum in LA I used to go to? Um, I know which one you're talking oh, about. I can't we think went of the name together. of it. Yeah. Yeah. I used to go there often. And it and it had art from all walks of life, um, all all ages and stuff like that, historically uh speaking. And it was so peaceful. And I would just be like, here I am, fully in this space with a piece of art. Like there was old school art that I, it was not my style yeah, yeah, yeah. with no interest in it whatsoever. Yeah. But I would stand in front of those paintings and start being fully present, dissociating from all the depression that I had yeah. in my life and just being like, there was an artist that created this. They spent hundreds of hours, brush strokes. What did they do inside of this? The vision that they had for this. And I would be again, present with the creative mm-hmm. life force that was right in front of me. And I think that that is a very powerful way to dissociate into mm-hmm. creative life force yeah or um another side note that just popped in my head is dissociating into you you were talking about nature but i'm talking about even the aspect of animals mm. like that oh, is yeah. such a fantastic and holding and I, I did this the other day for one of my friends who's having a hard week i took him to see these puppies that i knew and i just had him hold the puppies for 30 minutes yeah the puppies just licked him and laid on him and just chilled out on him. And he he allowed and d- animals will do this. They will help you regulate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah speaking of animals, I thought of um, horses because they actually use mm-hmm. horses to help people heal. Yeah. But like going and uh, like I, 
I remembered a friend who like their whole life, most of their, um, a lot of their pain inside of their life got healed by riding horses mm-hmm. because they were with the peace of the horse and the regulation of the horse. And it was like, they were just in that. And here's the cool thing. When we dissociate healthily or we have some of these healthy coping mechanisms, they can actually repair something inside of us. Yes. If we're connecting to things that are full of life and creativity mm-hmm. Or a level of enjoyment. Just the mere fact of like, I, I thought about this recently. Went to a comedy show. One of our friends was putting on. Mm-hmm. And I laughed so hard. Oh, yeah. I could barely breathe. Yes. And I remember walking away that night feeling healed about some issues mm-hmm. in my life. Yeah. Because joy, the the pure yes. engagement of laughter and being out of certain pain mm-hmm. that I was feeling in the moment literally was like, oh, I'm OK. I've resolved that. I didn't just bury it. I actually was like my heart healed. It got goodness to it. It just needed goodness and mm-hmm. it repaired something inside of me. Yeah, I think that, that it's really true. Laughter. We're talking about purposely learning how to engage pleasure in healthy ways. Right. That's part of what dissociation is, is I can be aware of the amount of pain and suffering and survival that all of humanity goes through. Mm -hmm. And so I purposefully find healthy ways to get relief from that pain Mm -hmm. without it destroying me. I found myself uh, on that note, like I was uh, friends of ours had kids and there are moments where I would play with them and I would get such joy out of their innocence and their childlike Mm -hmm. wonder and stuff like that. That I'd walk away from it like a better human. Yeah. And more relief about life. Like, oh, things don't have to be that serious. Look at these kids. They're getting taken care of. We're going to get taken care of. Everything's Mm going to be fine. Yeah. But yeah. I think I, one of the things that I have used, there's a couple things. I have a couple very entertaining friends. So I will call them and just listen to them rant about whatever they're ranting about. Because they're entertaining. And it, what it does is it sucks me out of getting lost and thinking too much about me Mm -hmm. because they're entertaining about them. Or I also have a book series that I'm reading. Um, Oh, go ahead. Reword uh, that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Reword it. Reword it. I'm not listening to you. There you go. There you go. There you go. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm listening to on audible. I think it's like the stormlight chronicles or something. It's like one of them's oath bringers. One of them's the way of Kings. One of them by Brandon Sanderson. Anyway, they're like 50 hour books, but I like them because they get me out of um, just whatever I'm whatever is happening in my life. They get me out into a different world. But it, I, I try to find books that aren't taking me into a toxic world too much. Totally. Like I don't want to go. I don't want to dissociate from my life into somebody's head who has a ton of anxiety right. or who has a ton of uh, dysfunctional coping mechanisms or like if I'm struggling with pain and I dissociate into sex then i don't want to read books that are full of sex you know what i mean i'm I'm looking for how do i find something that is not contributing to a dysfunctional cycle in my life totally but something that is helping do you know speaking on that one of the number one shows watch shows of all time plays on netflix is what the office there it is yes cross the board why? Because people could healthily dissociate into happiness. Yep. Mm-hmm. The peaceful life, nothing super high stakes. Yep. No one's about to die inside of it. Totally. You know, um, everything works out. Everything people are growing. Pe- things people are change. messy, but it's not in the way that everyone is totally, you know, disparaged by their messiness. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, the thing I like about these books is it gets me outside of my life, but then there's also some, like these books specifically, there's deep, lessons that you learn as you as you go through the whole book so it's like it's it's helping you connect to things inside of your life Mm -hmm. but not in a way that feels overwhelming so i ended up like after the first book that i read it like gave me a lot of dots that i connected for my own life but it wasn't in a i'm just listening to it and having to feel all of my feelings i think that's one of the reasons we go in and out of wanting to watch this is us is because sometimes it brings up too many feelings for right. us and other times it's like i really needed to connect I need to, to my feel feelings. feelings oh look i'm gonna cry and oh there's some goodness here i need that yeah one of the things i mean you did this last night i think you were feeling some pain and so you went to the worship the prayer house that yep. we have and you just laid in the worship and prayed and that's actually a great way one of the reasons it works for dissociating is it gets me out of my emotions 
into my spirit. Yeah. Into the thing that can connect. Either it gets me back to like the spirit part of me that is like, everything's going to be okay. I'm taken care of. Or it gets me to the place where I can actually cry and release the emotions. Because one of the things I've found when I'm ruminating in emotions, I often need to actually have an emotional release. I need to be able to cry and then move on instead of just sitting in it, circling round and round. Like one of the best ways to get out of pain is to feel it. Yeah. Like cry about it and then move on. Yeah. Kind of like your friend you're talking about in the divorce, they'd cry it for a little bit and then they'd move on during the day. And so, uh, worship is a great place. I, I was just at a worship night the other night and, um, just was able to cry about some of the stuff going on inside my internal world. Cause it just felt like a safe enough place to connect for a moment. And then after I cried, then I like got pulled out. I started praying for somebody else. And so I didn't get lost in my no. negative. And there was emotions. a bunch of laughter at mm-hmm. some point in, in the night with people. Yeah. And there was a range of emotions that mm-hmm. were very, uh, restorative so it's healthy to find ways again like it's kind of like we can get stuck in emotional ruts and so healthy coping mechanisms are finding ways to get out of the rut we're in in order to reconnect to ourselves, so that we can actually process our pain in a healthier way not in a not avoid it yeah we the same way that we talked in the beginning of this episode about needing to come back to an argument with somebody if you walk away you need to come back to your own pain if you walk away. So if I'm feeling lots of emotions and I decide I'm going to go to work, shove all those emotions in a box, I need to have a time where I put m- music on and journal or put music on totally. and take a ride in the car and feel or call a friend and process and cry. Or I have to have it. I need to build trust with myself that when I dissociate that I am going to come back to what the pain is so that I can release it. You know, I was having a weird thought that this won't relate to anything as we wrap this up. Oh, good. So it's a great way to preface what I was about to say. But I was thinking about how we all die. Oh. Like there's an ultimately an end. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, like we so get lost so often in our big emotions as if like we're going to be trapped in them forever and ever and ever yes. and ever. Mm-hmm. Um, we also get lost in this idea that we have to get to somewhere. Mm-hmm. But like, where is the somewhere we're going to? Because in the end, we're dead. And I'm just kind of like, um, like we could lower the stakes on all levels if we just accepted like, hey, there's a finite amount of time that I'm here. My pain has a limit to how long it's going to last. My pleasure has a limit to how long it's going to last in this way that I'm living and experiencing it. So maybe I could lower the stakes on it, allow myself to be in the moment, allow myself to find the ebbs and flows and the balance, not worry about where I need to get to, allow certain pain to get healed as it needs, allow it to also be buried when it needs to be buried. Because like it's very easy to put high stakes on either side of it. I have to get away from it or I have to deal with all of it. And and it's like, yeah, but there's a time limit to why you're here, Absolutely. right? Like just let it be. Yes. Lower the stakes, people. That's my point. You know, the last thing I was thinking while you were saying that didn't have anything to do with that either is sometimes a really good meal. You can just feel like everything's going to be fine in life with you, when you taste something that just tastes really good. That's called being American. <laughs> <laughs> we eat our feelings. We do eat our feelings. Yeah, I'm not saying you should do that. I think it's different when it's like uh, not something you're doing in every moment to right. try to feel pleasure. Right. But yeah. when you're like, hey, I need yeah. to actually have a good meal. And the other thing is when you're dissociated. So like. You can shove your face full of potato chips yeah. because they taste good, but you're not They're even delicious. paying attention. You might just be like shoveling them in. It's true. What we're talking about would be like purposefully engaging pleasure, which is like, I'm going to have 10 of these chips, but I'm going to sit and enjoy savor them. Savor each one. I'm going to savor each one. I'm going to enjoy what it tastes like. I'm going to be aware of what it tastes like. Like just that concept changes everything. Anyway, so our whole point is learn to feel pleasure in a way that helps you not get stuck in pain Yeah, and learn to come back to the pain so that you don't have it build forever and then take you out. Yeah. Uh, like we said, if you want to connect with us about those LCMC applications, you can email us at uh, L 
F-A at stumballconsulting.com. And uh, we will we will send you a link to see all the information. Just a couple days left to get that in. And then the pathway to freedom you can find at justinandabi.com and uh, at our courses page and get signed up for that. I literally just had somebody write to me while we were recording this in all caps. Why won't everyone listen to me on how important this class is? Man, I just want to save everyone the heartache I went through before I started learning all of this stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Why are you on your phone? Because <laughs> I'm dissociated. <laughs> all right. We love all of you guys. Thanks yes. for listening. Go, go, go dissociate. Bye now. <laughs>